Hey everybody, David G here, founder of the Internet Marketing Party, and I'm really thrilled to be having our special guest that I'm going to tell you about in a little bit. But you should keep watching this presentation if, when 99% of all search online is done via voice, not via texting or typing, if you want your brand, or your business, or your service to be found, the first thing that comes up on Alexa, Google Home, Google Voice, then you got to keep watching because our guest speaker, Emily Bender, the lovely Emily Bender, is going to be speaking uh, at the Internet Marketing Party. And so for the next 15 minutes or so, she's going to share with us some of the insider secrets she's learned by becoming the world's leading uh, search Google uh, Alexa and Google Voice search expert in the whole wide world. So welcome and uh, glad to have you, Emily. Hey, David. It's great to be here. Yeah, yeah. So uh, let's tell everybody, um, one of the things you said right before we got started is, hey, you know, we're friends and everything, and I'm very to the point. I just want to get right to the good stuff. Uh, I know you had uh, Anna on our team send you a couple of the interviews from past Internet Marketing Party speaker interviews, and you're like, one of my favorites was Roland Frazier because he went right to the good stuff. He just added so much value, and I love that. So let's go ahead and kick this off. Uh, why... Tell tell us more about like I know you've rocketed some of the biggest names online uh, in, in by way of brands to be what what comes up when somebody does a voice search. Um, tell us a little bit more about some of the stats you were talking about and why people should continue listening. Yeah, absolutely. So what people need to know is that right now we're straddling two eras of technology. We're leaving tap, type, and swipe, and we're moving into voice first. And what that means is what you think of with the iPhone, like first generation iPhone is really when tap, type, and swipe became a thing and we went to mobile. And that changed everything because you went from desktop to mobile. And then what's happening now though is that we're moving into an era where we're not gonna be doing this for much longer. This is actually super unnatural for us. It's not good for our bodies, our eyes, and our psyches in many ways. We're meant to speak, to communicate, to listen. It's everybody's natural first universal language since the womb. So your brain actually processes sound faster than any other sense. You process sound in less than the time it takes to blink an eye, like a tenth of a second. Yeah. So from a marketing perspective, if you want to reach your customers, you want to get in through the least calorie burning way, like the least expensive in the brain, because we're hardwired to have lazy brains that helps us survive. So reaching your customer through voice is actually the easiest way to get in and crawl into their ear, as I say with Beetle Moment Marketing. But David, you know, to talk about some stats, like the simple one is anywhere from 30 to 50% of searches will be done by voice in 2020. So less than a year away. I don't think it's gonna be 50. That is a little of an inflated stat, but let's say it's 30, let's say it's even 20. If one in five searches is done by voice, whether that's on an iPhone, someone says, hey Siri, where's the best pizza place? Or maybe they're on Alexa and they say, Alexa, can you recommend um, a good analytics platform for my B2B product? Are you even ready to be found there? Like, do you have a strategy for this? Most people don't. Very few brands actually do. And like, you need a strategy yesterday because this is the next wave of search, of e-commerce, of communication. Mm. Yeah, so like, for example, like my clients are folks that in, in with my agency are folks that run like Pete Vargas runs how to get on stages, on, like on speaking stages. Then Chris Luck teaches you how to build a membership platform. Then uh, Josh Turner teaches you how to use LinkedIn. And so I'm saying that because a lot of the people in the audience run info product businesses or, or B2B or B2C mm -hmm. type businesses. So in an instance like that, Pete would want to be on so that when somebody says, how do I get on, how do I improve my speaking uh, b my business through speaking or for, for Chris, it would be like, where can I find information about building a membership site? Yeah. Or so, for Josh, it's like, how do I use LinkedIn to get leads? And boom, right. like, like that. Right. Yeah. So somebody might be asking this question on multiple search engines or voice assistants. Increasingly, it's going to be through voice assistants. And Alexa, right. of course, has market share. So that's the one you hear the most about. That's the one that's got the most advertising presence. Right. Google, not to be discounted. It's very important also. Siri's bringing up the rear, but Apple has big plans there. Very cool. Very cool. So what are um, a handful? Of, I mean, 
this is a great way to start out by giving people an awareness, um, like a, almost like a good VSL, right? You educate and then you let them know that there's a pain. What are some pains that people don't even know? Some, some pain points in people's, obviously you've already pointed one out, which is like right now if I was to go and say, hey, how do I get more leads on LinkedIn? Chances are pretty good that I don't know whether Josh would come up um, or what is the best place to learn about marketing in Austin? I don't think Internet Marketing Party would show up. I mean, I don't know, right? Like auditorily. So what, uh, like what, 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 do, what do our audience not know that they should know about what, what's coming beyond that mm -hmm. stat? So a lot of people in, in this audience obviously know about SEO. This uh -huh. is the, the next phase of SEO. Something you probably don't know is if you are not position zero, it's unlikely that you will be found through a voice search. So word on street is there might be paid placements. They're not available yet. There's no advertising allowed on Alexa yet, but wow. what might happen, and I think this will be the case within a year or two, mm -hmm. probably sooner, you'll say, Alexa, how do I get found on LinkedIn? And she'll say, well, here's my recommended result. Would you like to hear the rest of my sponsored results? Optional to the user, because when you're doing something in a voice interface, unlike a visual, you know, page one SCRP, nobody wants to hear something they didn't ask for. It's a much more invasive and annoying experience when it's audio. So basically you have to be number one and you can be right now because there's like no competition, absolute blue ocean, early days. This is like getting on Twitter the first year. It's like getting on YouTube the first year. Your handle could be at David, but translate that to voice, wow. the gold rush. But it's, it's not a trend. Like I've been so into this for a few years now because I absolutely see the writing on the wall and every day more stats come out that confirm just how powerful voice is going to be for marketing, for business, for e-commerce. It's going to be ubiquitous. This is like, like getting, getting Bitcoin when, when it was like the, first. I know I snoozed on that. I'm still kicking myself, but you know, it's not, it's not going to be like, it's too late to get in. It's just going to be, right. you'll have that much more to claw your way the longer you wait. And you know, that many more people to compete against, right? Yeah. Cool, cool. So what are some, what are two or three easy things that someone can do today to get a sense of your, the depth and the breadth of your expertise that will make people go like, oh my God, if she gave me that here, like I have to come watch her speak on Thursday, November the 14th. Thursday, November 14th. So here's one thing, and this is actually new, and I've, I've been really excited about this this technology yeah you can audiofy your entire website with one snippet of code there is a company i have a relationship with and i will explain how to implement this on your site when you come on november 14th mm. pal <laughs> you can figure out just on november 14th how to get all of the text on your website to be playable in a very nice sounding ai voice it actually is very natural it's a little bit like alexa's voice and mm. the reason this is so powerful is if you have audio available on, let's yeah. say, a blog post, the time on site increases on average of 16%, the time spent on page. The bounce rate decreases. And you're, it's a win-win for the person who's hosting the site because it serves an ad if you wow. want. You generate a little extra revenue from a quick audio ad at the beginning, then it reads out your blog post. Somebody can hear your content whether they're driving at the gym, making dinner, they don't have to sit there and visually read it. People are busy, people are multitasking. Your readers want the option to listen. Wow, okay, wow, okay. I, I mean, that one's so powerful, I almost, well, it is powerful because it's, a, it's, 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 it's so alluring, but yeah. uh, so somebody can either figure this out on their own, come to the party, but is there anything you can share that people don't have to come to, I mean, not that I don't want people to come to the party, but I, I, I want, I want some, you know, some people can't make it. Some mm -hmm. people, uh, you know, so we don't want you to come off as like somebody who's just like, I'll give you this if, you know. Right. It's, I'm not sure all got just, like yes. it's not all carrots. Like yeah, we yeah. have some other hearty vegetables here in this soup today. <laughs> um, let's see. So something I am mm -hmm. just effusive about, no matter what I do, I mentioned Alexa flash briefing. If you don't know what a flash briefing it is, if you have an Alexa device, this is the absolute gem of the entire Alexa ecosystem. And it's actually not being promoted as much as it initially was. 
I think we're going to hit a little bit of a winter with it. And then it's going to come surging back as something that Amazon banks on because this is a content goldmine. Flash briefing is daily news. It's essentially like a brief cast, a mini podcast, yeah. and you can subscribe to a feed of flash briefings from creators that you want to hear from. Um, some of the top ones are the daily from the New York times, NPR, BBC, but individuals can make flash briefings too. I have a flash briefing. Many of my clients have flash briefings. This is the way that you crawl into your customer's ear that is more powerful than a podcast, certainly more powerful than anything you could do on social media because it's warm human audio, intimate, in their ear, in a routine way that occupies transitional moments during somebody's day. They're making coffee in the morning, getting ready for work. They're home, they're making dinner. They're in the car with Echo Auto, which I predict will be the number one stocking stuffer this holiday season. That's Alexa in the car. Flash breathing is a two minute bit of audio. You can have nice sonic branding on it. You can talk about any topic. You could do daily motivation, productivity mm. tips, marketing tips, oh. you name it. And then you can share that out to other social platforms. You can even make a series of flash briefings and then you can almost do like a book, but it's an audio book. So I'm, I'm excited because of your enthusiasm, but I don't know if I'm going to make myself look dumb here, but I don't quite get what, what is a flash briefing analog to either on radio or on podcasts or on like, is it like new and notable in, in Apple and iTunes or is it more like, uh, the, Good the, question. the scroll button, the scroll ticker thing at the bottom of the news. Like, I don't, I don't, I'm um, having trouble. Okay. Okay. I, I probably explained it in a too complex way because I'm well, so excited no, it's about it. Cause it's... you're excited about it and cause you get it and there's probably 80% of my viewers are like, Dave, you didn't get that. So what is, yeah. So I guess you could equate it to if you turn on the radio and it's the morning news and it's like a two minute briefing. Actually, WSJ Tech News Briefing, which I used to subscribe to like in my Stitcher podcast feed, now is also, of course, available as a flash briefing. Tech News Briefing, two minutes on the tech news of the day. Pow, but, so I guess what I'm trying to figure out is where would the average person be uh, receive a flash news briefing? On Alexa. Okay, it's only on, only, on an, only on only on on Alexa. That's it, where it natively lives. But many creators push it out to all the top podcast players as well. Like you can hear oh. my flash briefing. It's called Voice Marketing Daily Beetle Moment. It's always under two minutes a day, and it's about voice marketing. It's juicy tips, cool stats, what's in the news, why does this matter, and you can hear it if you say Alexa News. Alexa flash briefing, or you can just subscribe to it in Apple Podcasts if so that's the way you like to do it. It's basically just kind of like a like TLDR for yeah. for TLDR. That's the way I live. Yeah, so it's just like if you're like, oh, I'm I'm waiting at the DMV, or I'm I'm at I'm, I'm at yeah. the drive through, and I'm like, Alexa, news brief or flash briefing, please. Yeah, and it'll yeah, just... and you can do it if you open the Amazon shopping app on your iPhone or Android. You can access it right there. You don't even need literally an Alexa device. You just hit that little kind of a circular icon at the top of the Amazon shopping app. So it's the equivalent to like, like the, the, the news flashes, like what's going on? Like the yeah. Amazon's on fire, like Burning Man got canceled, like, yeah. like stuff like that. But and it's so cool because you curate your own feed. You can have all the briefings that you like in the order that you want them. It's just like original oh. RSS, like old days, Google okay, reader, okay. but audio. So Okay, so now that I get the framing of it, um, you, the way that our audience watching right now, our internet marketing party audience, can it, can it take advantage of this is to learn the format and the structure of how to create a flash briefing? Okay, yeah. start listening to them, get a feel for uh -huh. it, uh -huh. and you can set one up. I, I actually advise people on doing this. You can contact me if you want help on it, but like you can go do it by yourself. You can set up a flash briefing today, but you need to commit. It has to be every day. Don't do it if you're going to half-ass it. Just like with a podcast, don't pod fade. 50% of people do after six weeks. They die. 700,000 podcasts out there, most of them dead in the water, not updated. Hmm. Got it. Okay, cool. Um, you want to do one more or is that enough? I mean, we're done. We're like, it's up to you. Those are both super juicy. Uh, I... I'll do one more. Okay. Why not? Um, if you're not sure what it means to optimize for voice search, the mm. easiest and best place to start is to go into your existing analytics, go to Google analytics 
And you will be able to tell pretty quickly which of the search terms that people land on your site from mm -hmm. were spoken versus typed. Wow. You can tell because the spoken ones will be more natural language. They'll be much longer. Look at what people are asking. Look at the words they're using. Typically, these will be like the journalistic words of who, what, where, when, why, how. When it starts with that, it's probably a voice search. Have you optimized your site to answer those questions that are being asked? When you come on November 14th to the I Am Party, I'll do a deep dive as part of my presentation into what exactly it means to optimize your site for those. And it's not the same way you do traditional SEO where you try to like insert the phrase that answers the question. It's actually a whole different ballgame. Very cool. Well, that's awesome because it gives somebody the chance to first go and look because I never thought about that. Um, and second of all, to start thinking in that way. So cool. If, uh, if somebody goes and does all those things, we'll, um, we, we'll, I'll, uh, I'll maybe give them a shout out from the party or anything or maybe, yeah. yeah. So unless you have anything special that like, uh, you wanted to, to share, let me see here. I had some notes here before we go. Um, the, your party again is on, uh, where you'll be speaking is on Thursday, November the 14th in Austin, Texas. And uh, so I, this is one I recommend you fly in for if you're not from around here, because um, that, that's normal for people to do. And um, anybody that comes into town, I know for a fact you're going to be happy you did because uh, Emily's going to show you how to optimize your, your how, to, how to optimize your search results. What was the first one? The first one was so juicy. It was like, it, it was like, oh, audio fire your website. Yeah. Yeah. How to make it to where your entire website is just re readable. Um, yeah, literally out loud. And then, and then the middle one was uh, how to how to create a flash uh, flash briefing. Flash briefing. Yeah. And you know what? I'll I'll leave you with one more tidbit here. Yeah. Or at least a reason to come. If you're selling anything online, if it's an info product, if it's a literal product, like if you're a CPG, which I've worked with a bunch of those guys, in 2018, voice enabled commerce accounted for two billion in retail sales. It's expected to reach. 40 billion by 2022. Those are sales through voice assistants like Alexa. This is where people are going to shop. They're not going to be typing and swiping and definitely not going to the physical store. It's going to be through voice. So this is something everybody needs to be thinking about. And I will tell you how to do it on November 14th. Very cool. Very cool. I, I totally spaced on saying that you have done this for a very famous uh, CPG brand that we cannot name for legal reasons, but uh, they're in the, in the, can you say what section of the store they're available or would you rather the frozen not? Frozen aisle. The frozen <laughs> aisle. But anyway, <laughs> so what, what, uh, what you do for companies is you show them how to, how to optimize and dominate search results so that as they launch from voice and make it to where they're an e-commerce giant. So that when they, you just go, I want this and it makes sales online automatic. That's right. Yeah. So if you have an e-com company, physical product business, I highly recommend you get here. It doesn't matter what kind of business you have. If you have a business, you should be here, whether it's a realtor, whether it's a roofer, whether it's an info product, whatever it is, get here. Thank you, Emily. We're looking forward to it. Any final words before we say goodbye? I'm so excited for November 14th and I'm going to prepare like crazy and make it really worth everybody's time. So definitely come and thank you so much, David. I'm totally pumped to be speaking and appreciate the invite. Well, very cool. And, and uh, I just want to say that uh, you, as far as I'm concerned, I've done, uh, you know, over a hundred of these and you hit your mark because the amount of value that you gave here, I mean, for anybody that, that actually rolls up their sleeves and does the work, you've already given, you know, probably several, you know, tens of thousands of dollars for the right business, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars over time. So uh, take action out there. And if you like this, come to the party. See you uh, Thursday, November the 14th. And thanks again, Emily. You're welcome. Bye.